we had a tough day today, man. It's really down. Oh, hello there. Sorry, I didn't see you come in. Uh, Father Moo was just uh, checking his cryptocurrency online. You didn't know Father Moo was one of those weird cryptocurrency guys? Oh, well, he is, so now you know. Anyway, let's start the stream. Father Moo in your area. Yeah. Thanks for coming back. I guess you've seen we, we had a couple of the uh, small Eurorack Systems videos going live, but uh, I haven't forgotten our, our, our stalwart here, the Nord Micromodular. So if you, uh, if you tuned in uh, a couple of streams ago, we had that session on other people's patches, which was largely dominated by old school techno. So that got me thinking, I was like, yeah, I want to make an old school techno track. In fact, the patch you're listening to right now is number eight from the current series, which is called Mini Tech for Minimal Techno. This is my attempt to sound like a modern techno record, not an old school one. But uh, yeah, today let's make, uh, let's make some old school techno. That's my, that's my goal. 90s style techno. So, with that in mind, uh, I need to scroll through the patches here a little bit. There we go. Sorry for that little burst of noise. I'm going to use my... Uh, already pre-built to minimal dub generator as a starting point for today's patch. So, uh, but uh, I'm not gonna use it exactly as is. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a few things out right away. So let's do that now. First of all, let's kill some cables because it's too, it's too messy. You can always delete modules without knowing which cables are connected. Okay. Um, well, one thing I noticed uh, going through the old school techno, oh, that's the wrong drop down, was that uh, they certainly had a faster tempo than I expect. Father Moo was once a DJ back in the day, and uh, I would spin some, uh, if I was spinning techno, I would think the tempo would be around 128. Uh, you can see we're currently set to 126 here. But the the stuff I was listening to in the old patches was someone was set at 140. 140 is very fast for techno. To me, 140 is drum and bass territory or jungle territory. But uh, I'm going to go with 138 for today. I have to use this setting with this default uh, pre-built sort of sequencer machine because it uses the MIDI global up here on the left as the main clock. So I don't really like doing that. I like having a, a clock module in each patch, so each patch can have its own tempo, but uh, that's the way they designed the machine. It means that now if I go to one of my other patches using this default, if I made a reggae song at 60 BPM, and I, may, and I now set it to 138, that patch will be running way too fast. It's easy to fix, but if you were... Performing live, I wouldn't want to use, you know, patches based around the MIDI clock unless I was specifically doing like a techno set or something. So anyway, we got, uh, we got a suitable tempo for this. Let's go ahead and uh, I don't want to overwrite the old patch. So unlike my normal process, I'm going to do some saving at the beginning. There's the folder we were investigating before. We don't want that today. We should be in streaming patch archive. I guess we're on 92. So let's call this one 92 old school techno. 
I don't know if that'll all fit, but it should get the point across. Yeah, close enough. Um, okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead, as I said, I'm going to do some cutting here. We're already at a whopping 86%. Let's start. We, we are going to use drum modules, but I want to reset them up from scratch. And we are going to use uh, synth bass lines, but I also want to do those from scratch. So what I've got here is just the sequencer machine. We're down to 30%. I was thinking we might take the compressor out. Well, what we'll definitely do is take the echo chamber out. We, we had these, let's just put on the red wires. The default here is that if you go into the right eight channel mixer, you go straight into the output and into the thing. But if you go into the left one, you go into the compressor. Uh, let's just uh, get rid of this one for now. And that means we also don't need this. So we're just going uh, mixer into compressor into output. I don't think this matters, but whatever. So we do have an eight channel mixer. Uh, I, I know the voices I have in mind based on what I was listening to. So uh, we may be down to as few as three voices, but let's just leave it where it is right now. And we're now we're down to only 26%, so we can definitely build it. I think one of the things I found most reassuring about going through the other people's patches was that they were doing what I was doing. Um, they were building little self-contained machines. They had their drum machines. They had their bass lines. Uh, often they were using almost 100% of their processing power. And if they had a bigger Nord modular than mine, they would have had four patch slots. So they could have loaded that techno machine into one of the slots and then they could have loaded the other three slots with other synths and divided up their keyboard and played along with it. We'll never know what was in their minds, but uh, it was interesting to see that at least some of them, like me, maybe they were working with a Nord Micro Modular and had only one slot, but they were trying to build little self-contained songs, song-making machines into their patch. In other words, it was... One patch, one song was their philosophy. So I have three voices in mind uh, today, so I can make the resources for some of them. Uh, one of them is I'm going to use a uh, drum sound synthesizer to make a kick drum. And I'm also going to use a drum sound synthesizer to make a hi-hat. I noticed that... Uh, the the patches I was listening to often did not have uh, a snare. But they did have a kick and they did have a hat of some kind. Often they produced their hat in different ways. Uh, they might have like filtered white noise or something. And often they just had a 16-step hi-hat pattern, which I guess I can understand is is real, but... I mean, in the sense that like people would use that in a dance setting, but to me it seems overly simplistic. But I could also see a situation where it's literally kick hat, kick hat, kick hat over and over. So, uh, so that doesn't surprise me too much. So I'm going to make another event sequencer down here now with the goal of eventually driving my, uh, my kick and my snare which I will get started soon. The kick in the, sorry, kick in the hat. The kick in the hat will probably be slightly easier to get right, but uh, I need a little more effort put into the baseline. One thing I, I heard myself saying a lot during that uh, patch programming was that their baseline sounded like 303s. Uh, I think most people will know, but the 303 is a little... Uh, self-contained uh, monophonic synth and it was the sound of acid techno uh, if you don't know what it is just look up TB 303 of course these days you can buy a cheap Behringer version if you want much cheaper than anyone could have owned them in history pretty much 
So that's cool. But uh, yeah, today I'm going to be building my own 303-like sound. So how am I going to do that? Well, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have two oscillators. I want to give it more depth. I know the 303 only had one, but I want to... I feel I need that uh, increase in uh, oscillator depth to give it the power I'm looking for. And so there's the two oscillators. I'm going to mix them together. I can tell you right now, one is going to be a sine, and one is going to be a square. Those are the only two waves that the 303 offered so i'm going to mix these together one will be higher one will be lower whatever uh probably put the square wave on the bottom and keep the sine wave up because it gives you more overtones but uh that's not really an issue right now let's uh kind of want to get these out of here i'm going to put my logic modules from the sequencer over here underneath the mixer just to give me a little more real estate here because uh, I won't be interacting with those those are mostly just cable management at this point uh, great so I got two oscillators here one of the key points is going to be programming the actual sequence uh, many of the we have the 64 steps here many of the sequences of techno that I listened to were shorter. They had one or maybe two uh, note sequencers, but I like having the melodic variety. So uh, key points here are making a, a catchy, listenable sequence that the uh, that whoever's listening to this will enjoy. And another key part of it is tweaking the knobs just right to get the to get the sound right. I don't know if I'm going to end up using it. I've just put in a classic low-pass filter. I'm definitely going to be using that. But what I don't know if I'll be using is distortion. That's right. I'm going to take overdrive, something you rarely see me do, and put that at the end after my filter and just... You know what? I'll put the overdrive after the AD envelope. I'm going to use my simple little attack decay envelope again today. And, yeah. So let's wire this up. One oscillator into this. Another oscillator into this. I don't know if I'm going to use it, but later you might see me put some white noise in here to thicken up the sound a bit. So send the oscillator mixer to the filter in. The filter into the AD. And the AD into the overdrive. And finally, the overdrive out into our mixer. Then we also have, uh, let's put the kick there. And what will become the hi-hat here. So we're wired up to program some sounds. Uh, you might notice the dB per octave here. I think it was said that for years that, that people believed the TB303 had an 18, 18 dB Per octave slope and later we've rediscovered that it was actually 12 I, I can't remember if what I know that 18 was said to be wrong and 12 and 24 one of those was actually right instead but 18 is what a lot of people believed it was and emulated it at so let's put it there in the hopes of sounding more 303 like and uh, we just wire up the blue cabling for pitch now so we have the four pitch outputs of these, and oh right, okay. So these those mixers on the right are just summing up the pitch information. So luckily our oscillators have two different pitch inputs each, so I can wire one mixer to one pitch input. But actually what's happening is that each sequencer takes turns doing its job. So the exact same thing here. I have this oscillator. Uh, I'm going to send him the same pitch information to his two inputs. Turn them up all the way. And they should respond like that. As I said, I think I'm going to drop this guy down two octaves. There's E3. And there's E2. And he's on square wave. 
I'm going to leave the pulse width alone. I don't, I don't remember, but I don't think the Sphere 3 has a pulse width modulator. Uh, my goal here today is not to make a perfect 303, is to get kind of close to the techno sound. But uh, let's get it going and let's start uh, opening some uh, gates here. Oh, now I have to look at the sequencers as well. Hold on a sec. So uh, this is the output of all the channel one event sequencers here. So I think this should wire into the gate. Usually you see me take this G clock out, but that would give me 16th notes. And I'm not looking to play every 16th note of the scale today. Um, so yeah, let's do this. This will be kind of, well, you know what? Let's get it playing. Let's get some notes on the board so you can hear something. That might be more interesting. Let's do that. is right hope so I'm gonna take the same clock from here to drive my event sequencer for the drums I'm just gonna make a module to reset them together I'm gonna make a uh, four on the floor pattern here I'm gonna get some kick going Well, there's uh, five presets. I think two is closest to the kind of cheesy 90s sound I was going for. It's a kick that has some like pew to it. Let's try the other one as well. Not that. This is a bit like higher, uh, a little bit like a 909. That's not right. Good. So let's do some hi-hat now. some decay make that tighter good so like I said this drum pattern is very simplistic I'm gonna give him the whole yeah there we go even just turning that one hi-hat off helps it interact with the 303 sound. It, the 303 doesn't sound very 303 like yet, but let's get there. So another thing I'm gonna do is some octave work. So uh, the 303 loves to jump up and down through the octaves. So I'm gonna let him do that with some of these notes. See that? That's cool. Yeah. Go. Remember that step right after each step will also affect it so if you really want to 
hit a low note, you almost got to put like three steps together. Okay, minus 24 is too low. Why is that? Because I, uh, one of my oscillators is two octaves below the other. So let's, uh, I was going to, I was going to change those 24s. I think I'm just going to tune this oscillator up an octave. So I don't know if you have headphones on, but if you did, that fourth sequencer is really going to rock the house in terms of being a super low sub bass line. You got my minus 24s here. Cool. So I'm going to do something a little different with the uh, filter now. Usually you hear me use good old clocked random step generator. Four words I've certainly done to death in this series. Instead, I'm going to take a sine wave oscillator, turn the speed down, and plug it into the filter cutoff amount. And give it some. By keeping it slow, it means we'll get gradual change over time here. I have to open it up a bit. Give it some keyboard tracking. Good, but it's not perfect yet. Let's try feeding the same LFO to the overdrive. I don't know if that'll work, but we'll try it. It's not a very 303-like sound, if you ask me. But I think it sounds good. Let's try messing with uh, this a bit. Be longer. Too long. down and the overdrive up. That sounds cool. Okay. I want to get more motion where I can get it. I was going to patch something into the hi-hat, but I didn't do something I didn't plan. Sorry, it's getting too loud for me to even hear myself. Here's a phaser. Let's plug our hi-hat into the phaser. That's not exactly a revolutionary trick, but it sounds cool. It should give you uh, motion over time, which is what we're going for. Try turning the rate down so the speed is slow, just like this slow sine wave. I turn the depth up. I don't think I want to affect the center frequency, but I do want to dial it up because it's a hi-hat, so it's probably going to want a higher center frequency. I can't hear it. There's a bit of motion. Let's just listen for a sec. Yeah.
bad. I think I want to try dropping this. Those low notes have so much power. Especially when they're being run through the dual oscillator team. Something sounds weird about it. Seven, seven, yeah, they're all on seven. Let's try driving this back up to this. with it. Gotta get these filter settings just right. Oops, don't need it to be red. Maybe we took some of these out. I think that's about as close as we're going to get to 90s techno today. We got the tempo. I think the kick and hi-hat are definitely there. My final synth sound is not as 303-ish as, as the 303s I was listening to. Uh, maybe it's because I chose to slowly sweep the filter instead of making it go more crazy in time with the beat. I guess before we end this today, let's just see if that does it. Let's see what happens. Since we have two LFO inputs, let's take the clocked random step generator, borrow the clock, and we'll just turn off one LFO and listen to the other one. Go back to the first one. Just a matter of taste. I've done the clock random step printer thing so many times it's just it's just done to death. To try changing the slope. That's fine. Especially for that fourth bar. I like the way it sounds, but I don't think it sounds like a 303. But it's all good. And maybe I should go back to those OPP patches and look at how they made their 303 and, and copy that exactly. But anyway, that's it for today's uh, old school techno. Hope you found this interesting, kind of simple, but... I mean, this is what this machine was made for, I think, at the time. God knows people made a lot of techno patches for it. 
so uh, in our next stream we're gonna do we're gonna take the exact same uh, sequencer setup and we're gonna do another minimal techno patch kind of like the mini tech we heard today I'll try to make it different from that but uh, I just want to set them as a contrast between what techno sounded like in the 90s or what I remember it sounded like and uh, what it sounds like today so thank you so much for joining the stream uh, we'll be back with more of this more of small Eurorex systems did you know you could go to patreon.com slash ambient synths in the wild and become a patreon pa patrician a person who gives money to moose you can so uh, check that out on patreon.com slash ambient synths in the wild no spaces no numbers Thank you so much for joining us, Father Moo here, in the big church. You know what, just before I go, let's give us some reverb. Yes.